good afternoon, good evening. Depending upon what time you're watching me, I've missed you guys so much this week. Thank you all for your prayers. As you know, I was in Texas on last week. We had a fabulous time. I mean, God really moved. So, of course, I came back excited on Saturday night to be home with you. Uh, we saw a soul saved, a powerful altar call, uh, young adults coming to the Lord, getting saved, uh, miracles, signs, and wonders happened at that altar. So on Saturday night, we came fired up and ready to go. So if you missed it, you missed a really awesome service. So let's go ahead and recap about some of the things we discussed on Saturday night. This is your midweek uh, review, so get ready, because at the end, I'm going to tell you what your homework assignment is for this week. So on last week, we really opened up um, with a little bit of a trade secret. Uh, there's a particular scripture that we started in Hebrews. Actually, it was Hebrews chapter 11, and it details in a list, I'm sure some of you are familiar with this list, of our champions of faith. I mean, these people that list that are listed in Hebrews chapter 11 are not only our forefathers of faith, but they exhibit, watch this, the type of faith that God would have us to demonstrate. And we looked on last week, more specifically, that here in modern America, on this side of the Bible Belt, when we hear the word faith, we immediately think belief. But when God talks about faith, he is, he's instinctively talking about faith with action. That means that it's not just your ability to believe in your mind, but what he accounts as faith is the action that proceeds from that belief. That in itself is faith. So on last week, we, we really detailed uh, Hebrews chapter 11, and we kind of let everybody know for the next couple of weeks at Real Faith 365 here at Renew Worship Center, we're going to discuss these champions of faith because it's important for us to understand how our God counts faith. If faith, if faith can be accounted to us as righteousness, then how he looks at faith is really important. So in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, you'll learn that here God promises Abram. He tells Abram in, in verse 1, he says, I, he said, fear not, Abram, I am your exceedingly great reward. And then around verse 2, Abram replies with, but Lord, what will you give me considering I have no heir? Now, if you read over that without paying any attention, you'd say they're just having a normal conversation. But nothing is normal when you say but to God. So here all of a sudden, I couldn't figure out, as we discussed on last Saturday night, why when God says, fear not, I'm your exceedingly great reward, that the next thing out of Abram's mouth is but. But God, what will you give me? And on the surface, you would think, gosh, Abram, you're being a little bit, you know, unfaithful here. I mean, why are you asking what is he going to give you when he says he alone is your reward? But to understand the heart of Abram, first of all, we have to see that there are times in our own lives that we do the same thing, do we not? The minute that God says, I am all you need, we're going, yeah, that's great, but I need my rent paid. Or yeah, that's awesome, but seriously, my body is in pain. And so all of a sudden, you can be in a service when the worship is high and your hands are lifted and you're loving God. And God is telling you, I'm your reward. And you're like, yes, Lord, you're all that I need. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, but I really need my car note paid. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, but there's a problem in my marriage and I really have this issue. And so all of a sudden, you see at that moment that Abraham has a real life conflict. He has the same problems that you and I have had where the, the very manifest presence of God is telling him, I'm your reward. And at the same time, he has a real life situation that he's dealing with. And he says, what will you give me considering I don't have an heir? So in order to understand how Abram was, was speaking to God in that manner and what was really on his heart, we had to back up all the way to Genesis chapter 12. And in Genesis chapter 12, you see that God begins to open the covenant with Abram. And he tells Abram, Abram, if you will leave your home, leave your land, and move to this place that I'm going to direct you, that I'll bless you. I'll bless you with a family, and your family will bless the entire world, per se. And everyone that blesses you, I'll bless. And everybody that curses you, I'll curse. Now, here again is the beginning of why Abram, or Abraham later to be known, had a but when it comes to God. In chapter 12... Abram realizes that here God is promising me a family. He's promising me the fact that my family will bless every family in the world. He's promised this to me. But by the time we go from chapters 12 to chapter 15, something about that shifts. So your challenge for this week's homework assignment 
is to really study everything that shifts in Abraham's journey and why he goes to, from full of faith in his initial journey with God. And that was a huge journey that he had to initially take a step of faith and move. That lets us know that what God is telling us to do is if he gives you a promise, will you move? On last Saturday night, we said Abram had a choice to make. God said, I will give you these things under the condition that you move when I say that you move. There are often of us, many of us, that God has promised something to us. He's promised you a new business. He's promised you a better family life. He's promised you to go back to school. He's promised you a ministry, a, a, a thriving anointing in, in his kingdom. He makes these promises. But with these promises, there's always an action that he's requiring. So the difference between the haves and the have-nots in the kingdom of God is are those that will move and those that don't move. Do you move when God says move? Do you take that instantaneous leap? Do you pack up all that you have and count your whole life as dead, according to Hebrews? Do you count yourself as dead that you might attain the promises of God? Now that is the type of faith that moves God. Not just the mere belief in some of the simple things that he says, but the action that comes from you because or as a result of that belief is the type of faith that God is talking about. Not do you believe he can heal you, but how do you act because you know he will heal you? Not do you believe he will give you that job, but how do you act because you know you've got that job? That's the type of faith that God is talking about. So until we can understand how to control the soul, a part of us, the mind and the emotions, and sometimes our very flesh that fights against that, against that type of faith, we'll never have or attain the promises of God. So Abraham had a difficult journey. And chapter 12 really outlines that journey for us. But in order to truly understand even more where he was coming from, we had to look at Genesis chapter 11. In Genesis chapter 11, what happens? A lot and Abram separate. Why? That's important. In Genesis chapter 10, the great flood happened. And, and in class on, on last Saturday night, we discussed in detail the timeline of those events. We've learned about the story of Noah, we've learned about the story of Lot, and we've learned about the story of Abram. But when you see the time span and how they are consecutively in order, you'll understand even more what Abraham was really facing when God told him to move. Oh my goodness. So, our homework for this week was to catch up from Genesis chapter 3 all the way to Genesis chapter 15. So if you already read 15 and you already read 12, you're good to go. Just fill in the gaps for the rest of the chapters. So this weekend on Saturday night, we won't be at 2137 Kingston Court. Instead, we're going to be at Stone Mountain having a wonderful church camp out. So if you haven't heard any information about it, make sure you email us at renewworshipcenter.org. We'll get you your information. To those of you that are packing and getting ready, let's pack bug spray. Let's pack some marshmallows, some graham crackers. Yes, I'm really just worried about the food. Pack everything you need, and we'll see you guys Friday around 2 o'clock. Love you, and I'll talk to you soon.